So shall we look to the loving Lord in prayer. Loving, gracious, heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence in our midst. We look unto you, and it's your promise that whoever looks unto you, their faces will not be put to shame. They will be radiant. Because in you there is light of life, abundance of life and light. Yes, Lord, we humble ourselves to that most. Lord, to become a zero before you. Yes, Lord, we do not have anything to glory in ourselves. Nothing good dwells in our flesh. And that humility, that place of zero-ness is our true reality. And we won't acknowledge that. And that is our rightful place and position. Yes, Lord, we want to humble ourselves at your feet. And cleanse our hearts once again with your blood. And flood our hearts with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, give us your spirit beyond measure. So that we can continue to behold your glory in the mirror of the word of God. In our spirit. In that most holy place. In the true heaven. In the paradise. In the third heaven where you are dwelling, Lord. We want to be with you there as humble and contrite people, broken in our self-will and having no confidence in our flesh, but glorying in you and worshipping our Father in heaven. Yes, Jesus, we want to cling on to you. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Give us your living manna. Yes, Lord, we want that experience, the same experience that the disciples had when their hearts were burning, when they heard you, Lord Jesus. We want to hear from you the words that are spirit and are life. Help us, Father. Glory for your name. Lord, we want to decrease and we want you to increase in Jesus' precious Peter's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we have been uh, beholding the glory of the Lord Jesus in the mirror of the word of God in the book of Revelation in the last two weeks. And such a blessed book God has given us, a prophetic book. Because it is a prophetic book, uh, it is given at the end of the Bible after all the books, uh, after all the epistles. Some scholars believe that probably it would be First John that would be written at last, written the last book to be inspired and written would be First John probably. Some scholars have find it might be the book of Revelation itself, but whatever be it, because it is a prophetic book after the epistles, it is compiled at the last book of our Bible. And we saw... Uh, the topography, the geography of Isle of Patmos in the Aegean Sea, which is a uh, elongated embayment of Mediterranean Sea, which is between Europe and Asia. And interestingly, <laughs> this uh, land of Israel is part of Asia, and India is also part of Asia. Many times, many Indian people think that Christianity is a Western religion, but actually, Israel from where uh, Christ came and uh, from where the gospel spread to the uttermost parts of the earth, that Israel is part of Asia and India is also part of that Asian continent, uh, as we all know. And so, uh, so Christianity is not a Western religion, <laughs> but uh, it's a heavenly way, Jesus being the only way, the way, the way that the ladder that connects heaven and the earth, the way to the heavenly father in the heavenlies, Jesus being the way to experience that heavenly life, not just after death, but even while here on the earth, we can experience a heavenly life, a life of heaven on earth. There is a kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. And John uh, in the island of Patmos, uh, we saw that in verse 9, he was on the island called Patmos. So, uh, you know, the advantage of being in an island is that all around is sea. And he was in this rocky, barren island. And uh, so uh, there was nobody to talk to, but only the Lord is there. In one way, there are no other distractions. Many a time, God takes us to some island. Sometimes it can be a hospital bed, some sickness or some loneliness. Some Sometimes it can be this lockdown and quarantine and all that, uh, you know, we all, uh, we all had to go through in the COVID times. It can be 
some pressurizing situation some tribulation some persecution that we face and it is an island of patmos where the lord wants to reveal our, reveal himself to us in a more fresh more majestic way than we have ever seen of course john the apostle he was probably the one of the closest apostles to jesus <laughs> of course you know in one sense he was the closest because even peter did not dare to lean on jesus bosom so uh, in that sense he was the closest of jesus disciples peter john and james of course they were the closest and john even in a physical sense also he was you know closest to the bosom of the lord and he continued to lean on the bosom of the lord even after jesus ascension as his mighty apostle planting many churches and and uh, at the age of more than 95 he is uh, writing this book of revelation the side of patmos and he was the godliest no doubt undoubtedly and ambiguously and equivocally uh, he was the godliest of uh, heavenliest of all people living on the face of the earth at that point of time and he had seen the glory of the lord in his spirit more than any human being uh, who was living on the face of the earth at that point of time and still uh, you know uh, he was rewarded by the lord with more and more of heavenliness of heavenly visions and more of heavenly reality and of course heaven was a reality to him all throughout his life and imagine after this all this revelation uh, from the lord how much more the heaven was such a reality in his life and uh, as we go through this book it is not just the chronology of the events or uh, some interesting interpretation some clever ideas that should uh, that should enchant us or that should uh, or to say thrill us but rather all uh, that thrills my soul is jesus as we rightly sing in that song only one thing only one person that is thrilling our heart it is the lord jesus the first love towards him and that is what john had to rebuke jesus had to rebuke through john even to the first church in ephesus where john was ministering and that time he was taken as an exile to the island of patmos and even we know revelation 2 for you have left your first love uh, jesus is telling them and uh, that is what it is all about that simple pure devotion to the lord being preoccupied with the lord jesus himself the person of the lord jesus he he is everything jesus is everything he is our message and uh, and this book is about his revelation it is about not just about some events and everything of course all are there of course we need to know about all that uh, and we need to have a revelation about all that events and all but uh, everything is meaningless if uh, jesus himself doesn't reveal more and more to us uh, through this book as we meditate and uh, the first words uh, as we also uh, we know i mean we uh, uh, del uh, we went through this through all these verses till verse 6 last time uh, <laughs> and uh, once again going through those first six verses quickly <laughs> otherwise actually we will be again <laughs> you know dwelling in detail but uh, we do not have time to dwell in detail but of course you know revelation of jesus christ verse 1 it is just jesus, jesus revelation and uh, this revelation god the father permitted granted jesus although this is equal to the father uh, jesus uh, you know although equal but in position uh, jesus is humbling himself to the father uh, first corinthians 11 3 we read that uh, father is the god is the head of christ or fa- father is the head of christ although they are equal in position uh, jesus is equal with the father uh, we read that in philippians 2 6 and 7 he did not regard equality with the father a thing to be grasped so he was equal to the father but he did not grasp that but he existed as the word of god from all eternity and uh, he humbled himself to take that position and you know many a time when we think that when we have to submit to authority it is a very mean thing or it is a very lowly thing but actually it is a glorious thing because jesus uh, manifested the glory of submission sometimes actually when sisters uh, 
you know, when as wives, they have to submit to their husbands or as uh, we have to submit to the elders of the church, we have to submit to the authorities in our workplace or authorities in whatever secular place that we go to. Suppose we go to some office, we submit to the authorities there, what they say. So like that, when you have to submit, many times we think that, oh, it is a very painful thing. It is a very irritating thing. It is a very humiliating, humiliating thing. But we see the glory of submission uh, in Jesus himself and how the Holy Spirit uh, he is hiding himself all the time, although he is the one who is uh, behind the scenes to, uh, you know, behind the scenes, uh, behind every meeting, uh, behind all our, you know, all our fellowship and everything. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit that really gives us life. And even the revelation of Jesus and the Father, the Holy Spirit gives us, but he hides himself. How, you know, that glory of submission and hiding hiding oneself and even God the Father he himself is hiding there is this blessed verse in Isaiah 45 verse 22 where God is described as a God who hides himself uh, they, uh, uh, Isaiah 45 not verse 22 but verse 15 rather Isaiah 45 verse 15 truly you are a God who hides himself a God of Israel Savior you know God is not uh, you know, suppose actually if God <laughs> uh, manifests himself every morning, uh, suddenly there would be a voice from heaven. I am the God here. I am the creator. You better listen to me. <laughs> so suppose it happens, there won't be any atheist or any longer on this earth. But God doesn't do like that. He reveals himself to the humble, to the wise and prudent. Let them be deceived that the fool, fool says in his heart that there is no God. Psalm 14, 1. And a greater fool will say that there is no God uh, openly also. Even if, even if you think in your heart there is no God, you're a fool. You're a fool according to the word of God. Because we are not calling anybody fool uh, in a derogatory manner, but, uh, you know that is what the word of God says. So even if you if you think there is a God, there is no God, uh, even in your heart, if you say you are a fool according to the word of God, but if you say it openly with your mouth, you are a greater fool. But uh, actually, let those people be deceived till you know Jesus comes again one day, or till they die, and uh, when they uh, when they are. Uh, shock to see the reality of eternity so let them be deceived god you know god allows people to be hardened and when they harden themselves god also hardened their hearts just like god hardened pharaoh's heart when pharaoh hardened his heart to the promptings of god god hardened his heart and that is what we read in the book of exodus and uh, so like that you know there are people all around us who are hardening themselves to the reality to the truth of the light of the word of god but God, you're a God who hides himself and to whom does God reveal? Matthew 11, 25, as we always call, I praise your father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, but you have revealed these things unto babes, uh, revealed uh, revealed all the heavenly realities and everything is as a, given as a revelation. And that revelation, that word, apocalypse is a revelation. That is a uh, apocalypse is calypto means to hide with a veil and the unveiling revelation means that the veil is being rent the veil with unveiled face beholding us in a mirror as we read in second Corinthians 3 18 there is a revelation that should happen but that should have that will happen only if that veil which is our self or our flesh as we read in uh, hebrews 10 19 and 20 if that flesh or self is put to death or other words we humble ourselves and give ourselves unto the Lord as a living sacrifice. We humble ourselves and surrender ourselves. That is putting self to death. It is the Holy Spirit who can put self to death. We can only yield ourselves. We can, you know, God has given us a willpower, which is something neutral, where we have a choice to either humble ourselves or to harden ourselves. In that uh, willpower, if we choose to humble ourselves and uh, surrender ourselves before the Lord, then it is a sword of the word of God with the fire of the Holy Spirit that will instill death in our self. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Hebrew, sorry, Romans 8.13 uh, If you uh, live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, it is only by the Holy Spirit that we can put to death the deeds of the body. That is, when we surrender ourselves as a living sacrifice, the Holy Spirit and the word of God, the fire and the sword of the word will instill death in ourselves 
and to the mesha there is a death and breaking or rending of a self rending of that we in that mesha there will be a, in that proportion there will be a greater and greater fire of the holy spirit in our spirit and there is a revelation uh, we would see jesus more clearly more and more clearly of course god gave us a revelation that jesus is the forgiver of our sins when we became born again that there is no other way to the forgiveness of sins except through jesus christ and uh, we understood that god gave us a revelation which is hidden from the rest of the world so many millions of people in the world who do not have that revelation of course uh, we responded of course the grace of god uh, the holy spirit and uh, the uh, grace of god there is a power of the holy spirit that was that was uh, prompting us that was hovering over us and we responded to that uh, progressively or out uh, you know uh, through many situations god ministered to our hearts and we responded to the prompting of the lord and uh, we got that revelation that jesus alone can forgive us and uh, we became born again we surrendered ourselves uh, and uh, uh, we got cleansed by the blood of christ the holy spirit came into our heart and uh, we became a new being in our spirit a new spirit was given to us and the new spirit there is a holy spirit uh, was a uh, holy spirit came into our hearts came into a new spirit and we became born again and progressively every step every every step of growth in this christian life is a matter of revelation uh, just like we got a revelation that jesus is the forgiver of our sins we get a revelation more and more that only this jesus can help me to overcome sin and to overcome the world overcome this world system overcome the self and the flesh and only the lord jesus can help me to live like him only uh, he can help me i am so helpless so through many failures and through many difficulties the lord will teach us that uh, we can do nothing of ourselves apart from me you can do nothing john 15:5 that is a revelation that god has to give us more and more and through each of the miracles that jesus did this is trying to teach that revelation uh, you know it was trying to teach them that lesson of course uh, you know which they got as a revelation of course more and more as uh, after the day of pentecost when they when the holy spirit really came into them and they became uh, born again and they became mighty witnesses of the lord and uh, jesus uh, you know as the book revelation the uh, the name of the book itself is revelation and this revelation is only given to the uh, uh, is re- first given to uh, you know this bond servant john the apostle we read there that revelation that god granted jesus to show to his bond servants only to the bond slaves those who are completely surrendered to the lord if they uh, not to the people who wants to have all this maximum in this world and of course whatever minimum to enter the kingdom of heaven they want to do that they want maximum of this world as well as of the heaven then actually you know uh, not to the, such people but those who really want to give themselves totally to the lord those who want to be wholehearted disciples for the lord those who want their life to count for the kingdom of the lord those who want to fulfill the calling that god has uh, given them in the body of christ so to those people to his bond servants uh this revelation about the things which must soon take place quickly take place uh, and uh, to reveal to this bond servants jesus sent an immediate uh, communicated signified semeno to signify with many signs uh, he communicated this uh, through his angel to his bond servant john and john who is this john john the apostle who testified to the word of god and the testimony of jesus christ his, by his life uh he testified to the word of god and to the testimony of jesus christ that expression we see uh, not only in this verse 2 but also in verse 9 because of the word of god and the testimony of jesus and we also see this verse again in uh, revelation 12 17 there uh, is about the end time church revelation 12 17 the dragon the devil was enraged with the woman there is israel and went off to mo- make war with the rest of her children uh you know the first offspring that is the israelite jewish people and when he couldn't succeed there he was making war with the rest of her children that is the church church is also called the offspring of the woman israel because the church was born uh through uh, jesus himself came as a jew as a descendant of abraham and all the 12 apostles were also including apostle paul uh they were all from jewish 
race and uh, so through uh, through abraham's descendants only the uh, the uh, gospel came to the rest of the world and we are all spiritual descendants of abraham so we are also the rest of the children who keep the testimony who keep the commandments of god uh, and hold to the testimony of jesus so that is the expression that is used over there and also we saw in revelation 19:10 also twice that phrase comes uh, do not worship me the angel says revelation 19:10 i am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of jesus so uh, the brothers of jesus are those who hold the brothers who hold the testimony of jesus do we do i have do we have testimony of jesus in our in our own personal life in our family life in our at our place of work in our church life at in our land in our neighborhood do we hold to the testimony of jesus worship god for the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy all prophecy whatever the lord wants to speak uh, to his people to his church that is prophecy words of encouragement edification and consolation uh, first corinthians 14:3 one who prophecy speaks to men for edification exhortation consolation and all these prophecy is actually testimony of jesus christ is showing for the life of christ through our words and through our life through our words and uh, john testified to the word of god and to the testimony of jesus christ and he saw all these things and there is a blessing for those who uh, there is a blessing macarius uh, you know enviably uh, happy that is the real word uh, meaning of that word macarius uh, you know there is we will be enviably happy you know people would be can be jealous oh, how can this person be so happy <laughs> so full of joy all the time Uh, so like that blessed there is a blessedness in when we read and uh, hear uh, read meaning public reading of the scriptures especially when we read out to others or share with others what the lord spoke to us through this and uh, those who hear uh, the because those days actually uh, you know only the manuscripts were there uh, many written manuscripts would be there and uh, it would be very expensive to buy that and all and uh, so uh, there would be public reading of scriptures as we saw that uh, reference in first timothy 4:13 public uh, reading of the scriptures so uh, reading in today's terms of course when we read the word of god and meditate ourselves as well as when we uh, read it out to others in the sense of uh, communicating to others what the lord spoke to us and those who hear the words of the prophecy we hear when it is being read and when it is being preached and we heed we take heed to that we obey that we saw that word tereo tereo uh, how that word is emphasized so much in the book of revelation multiple times that word is used uh, keeping the commandments of the lord keeping obeying if you love me you will tereo my entole <laughs> entole entole is that word for commandment <laughs> which we just saw in revelation 12:17 uh, about the rest of the offspring who keep the commandments of the lord that is uh, that word is entirely entirely or uh, commandments or order or charge if you love me you will keep my commandments you tereyo you will keep my commandments you will obey you will uh, submit yourself to keep that commandments and uh, then verse 4 john <laughs> you know with no this not dr john <laughs> reverend john or pastor john or uh, uh, you know anything like that amongst the brethren uh, there is no title of course in an official place we might be advocate or doctor or, <laughs> uh, we might be whatever title of course you know profession we use that but amongst the in the church in the church of god and the brothers we are just an ordinary brother ordinary sister john simply john uh, if somebody calls us uh, you know, <laughs> just by your name <laughs> whether you will be offended uh, many pastors and so called uh, reverends and so called people and all uh, you know they would be offended if they uh, you know even if you call even if we call them sir and all also they might like to be called pastor you know we are not judging them because they do not have light so but uh, we need to discern that jesus uh, he is the almighty god he came as a bond servant as a bond slave who who even washed the disciples feet so that humility lord i want to be he uh, humble although he is the son of god he is the second person of the trinity he is almighty god himself who created everything 
but he says i'm just a son of man <laughs> of course that son of man is a title of the messiah but amongst all the titles of the messiah the lowliest title son of man as an ordinary man uh, he referred to himself son of man that title of the messiah we see in uh, daniel 7:13 which we'll be see uh, about the coming of the son of man in the clouds in, in verse 7 we see revelation 17 behold is coming with the clouds so that uh, has a connection with uh, daniel 7:13 we'll go to that verse when we go to that verse and uh, john to the seven churches seven is a number of perfection uh, of course there were seven churches there in the asia minor we saw the map last week uh, that seven churches and uh, which are in asia now uh, that uh, that asia minor that region is now called turkey grace uh, we uh, saw what is grace of god the power of the holy spirit to help us in our time of need uh, the power and help of god through the holy spirit that strengthens our spirit and meets our every need especially uh, in times of temptations and trials and this grace he gives to the humble receiving which we can overcome sin and uh, that is the grace of god it's a scriptural definition of the grace of god this not just the unmerited favor of god uh, because unmerited favor of god even unbelievers receive even whatever even worldly people receive uh, even they are able to breathe they have health and money and everything is unmerited they do not merit anything that is unmerited uh, unmerited favor of god so grace is not unmerited favor of god that is a you know a man made definition of grace but true grace as we see in the scriptures is uh you know as an acronym people say god's riches at christ's expense of course what are god's riches so if we see in the scriptures it is the power of the holy spirit that helps us and empowers our spirit uh you know a time of need especially in our times of temptations and trials and this grace god gives only to the humble even saving grace also when we humbled ourselves as a little child then only we could be forgiven we came to the lord as a little child lord i cannot earn the forgiveness of sins by my own charity deeds or my own righteousness or my own religiosity but lord i need your forgiveness we humbled ourselves god helped us uh, the holy spirit uh, helped us there was a prompting of the holy spirit but we responded to that our part was so there so uh, even uh, to be become born again also there was a certain level of humbling that should happen and even to grow in the grace of the lord also more and more as we become more and more humble more and more of the grace of the lord the power of the holy spirit and more and more we'll become more and more christ like and heavenly minded that is the uh, growth in the kingdom of heaven grace to you and peace uh, the power of the holy spirit especially peace of god uh, holy spirit many fold fruit of the holy spirit we read in galatians 5 22 23 love joy peace So this peace, especially peace, grace and peace. Even the Old Testament, we saw number six, last verses twenty three, twenty four, and all. How the even the Old Testament, may the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. It was a blessing that God gave to the children of Israel through Moses and Aaron. And uh, so grace and peace from him. Even the uh, many of the epistles also we see that uh, it is not just a vain exhortation it's not a meaningless repetition many a time when we see something repeated we think that oh it's a, just a greeting but uh, there is no meaningless repetition in the word of god this is spoke against meaning meaningless repetition in matthew 6 so if it is repeated that means it is more important so we need the grace of the lord and the peace that is the fruit of the holy spirit peace with god peace with other people and the peace of heaven that surpasses all understanding and that is from the father son and the holy spirit we see the triune god in verse 4 and 5 from him who is and who was who is again the father from the seven spirit the sevenfold holy spirit a uh, sevenfold ministry of the holy spirit we saw from isaiah 11 uh, 1 and 2 and 3 and this holy spirit is from the throne of grace we saw that from revelation 22 1 river of life clear as crystal and from jesus christ jesus christ is called the jesus christ jesus the word meaning savior uh jesus uh, you shall na- uh, call his name jesus because he shall save his people from their sins matthew 121 so jesus the word meaning is savior and christ meaning christ is the greek word for messiah messiah is the hebrew word christ is the greek word and the word meaning is anointed one the anointed one from the uh, anointed one from the father to redeem israel to redeem the spiritual israel church also 
and uh, the Jesus is called the faithful witness by his life. He was a faithful witness. He is faithful to keep his promises. In, in these end times, we need to uh, see the trustworthiness of Jesus as a faithful witness and also as a faithful witness in terms of how he lived his life as a faithful witness of the Father. And that, you know, that uh, Jesus says, John 14, 9, he who has seen me has seen the Father. What a witness, what, what greater witness <laughs> than that can uh, be said of Jesus. And if people can say about our lives, oh, when I see this brother, this sister, I'm reminded of Jesus. You know, like that uh, some story, <laughs> whether it is a real story, we don't know, about that blind girl who was selling apples and uh, at the railway platform and many people were going and uh, somebody, uh, you know, tripped over those apples and uh, yeah, all those apples got crashed and you know, hurried to catch the train, <laughs> some young man. And uh, so, uh, so, so many people were there, but one person came and uh, he paid for all those crushed apples and paid more than that. And she asked, are you Jesus? <laughs> because she's a blind person. So, uh, you know, when they see the life of Christ, uh, they mistake us. Uh, are, they, are the people in the world mistaking us for Jesus? Jesus, uh, Jesus mercy and compassion, Jesus Jesus, of course, Jesus, not only mercy and compassion, but also his fervor against uh, sin and traditions and people exploiting others, uh, whether other people are mistaking us for Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, so that is the testimony of Jesus. And he's a faithful witness. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Uh, you know, I and my Father are one. Jesus says in John 10, 30. <laughs> So may the Lord help us to be his faithful witnesses. And he's the firstborn of the dead. Uh, he's the first one to rise again from the dead, never to die again. And he's the ruler of the kings of the earth. Uh, you know, what a great encouragement. He's the perfect controller. He's a perfect sovereign controller of the whole universe, all our circumstances, everything. Of course, the ru ruler of the world is the devil. Uh, some authority is there in the devil's hands. Some power is there uh, in the devil's hands. He's the ruler of the world. Jesus says about him as the ruler of the world in John 14, verse 30, uh, as well as the ruler of the world has blinded the uh, eyes of the unbelieving, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, and the whole world is under the evil one, 1 John 5, 19. So that ruler of the world, but uh, the ruler of the rulers of the world, ruler of the prince of the world, the overarching sovereignty is in the hands of our savior, Jesus Christ. And he says, all authority in heaven and on earth are given to me. Uh, we read that in Matthew 28, verse 18. Uh, so he's, uh, he's the ruler. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. We see that expression in Revelation 19. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. As we sing in many songs, as we, in a time when we praise him, we use that expression, king of kings and lord of lords. We see that expression in Revelation 19, 16. King of kings and on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written. Especially as we come to this uncertain end times, we need to be sure that he's the king of kings and he's the lord of lords. There would be many lords and many kings on this earth, many presidents and prime ministers who have much authority, who have much pomp and glory and show and luxury on this earth. But my savior is above everything and he's, uh, he has even the king's heart in his hands. Uh, we saw that Proverbs 21, 1, the king's heart is like channels of water in the Lord's hands and he turns it wherever he wishes. Without his knowledge and permission, nothing can happen to me. Even the hairs of my head are not only counted, but also numbered. He has given a number to each, each hair, Luke 12, 7 and Matthew 10, 30. We read that the hair, even the hairs of her head are numbered. So even if one hair falls, you'll be able to say it is the 1,34,476th hair. So such is his hair. Even a, even a loving mother uh, who takes care of a little baby uh, will not have the count of the, even the count of the hairs on the baby's head. But uh, Father in heaven has not only counted, but also given a number to each hair. That means such is his uh, care for the minutest details of her life. And uh, he is the ruler of the kings of the earth. Uh, to him who loves us and released us from our sins, he loves us. And because of his love only, he has released us. Uh, actually, many times we 
think that oh um, you know all this uh all this creation drama and all this oh what is this for but it is out of his love god is love and god is love first john 418 and 648 and 16 and uh, god is love because god is love he is exists more than one person so that love is love only if it is shared so he exists from all eternity as more than one person and he wants to share this love to even more people who deserve that love who respond to his love and he has created mankind and out of the mankind he is sifting people and he has hidden everything from the wise and intelligent and the more uh, people respond to him the more people respond to him the more he will reveal himself to him and out of his love he has released us from our sins and we saw that verse in jeremiah 31 3 i have loved you with an everlasting love because of loving kindness i have drawn you nearer to me jeremiah 31 3 if you read that why god has drawn us near to him not to trouble us oh if god has Uh, many times sometimes actually people think that oh if god uh, hasn't given us any commandments to follow and think yes just uh, let us like live like what we like uh, that would be very easy you no know? so like that we might think but uh, jeremiah uh, that verse blessed verse in jeremiah about the everlasting eternal love of god uh, jeremiah 31 verse 3 says that lord appeared to him from afar saying i have loved you with an everlasting love therefore because i have i have loved you with an everlasting love therefore i have drawn you with loving kindness i have drawn you nearer to me draw me near as you sing that song i have drawn you near nearer to me with loving kindness because i have loved you i have drawn you because uh because he loved us he has released us uh from the penalty of our sins and also progressively from the power of our sins that is what the salvation from sin uh, coming back to revelation 15 released us from our sins uh, salvation releasing of the releasing from the sins there are three tenses salvation from our sins uh, salvation has got past present and future tense so when we became born again we became uh, we got released from the penalty or punishment of our sins and when jesus comes again in future uh he will release us from the presence of sin we will have a resurrection body in which we do not have any flesh or cell but uh, you know we will be transformed to his likeness to perfection so we will be tra- uh, delivered from even the presence of sin but now progressively in the present tense what is happening is sanctification that is being released from the power of sin so from the penalty and punishment from the power and in future from the presence of sin so he has released us from our sins uh, by his blood uh, how precious is, is his blood innocent lamb of god spotless lamb of god as we read in first peter 1 19 and 20 the spotless lamb of god how jesus although he came as a man although he was tempted in all points as we are he kept himself he humbled himself to that most and he was a zero before the father all the time if he was if he had a little pride or little exalting himself <laughs> in a, even for a fraction of second any point in his life he would not have become the perfect lamb of god spotless lamb of god and uh, you know he would not have been the perfect lamb of god uh, ready for a, a perfect perfect sacrifice on the cross but he was uh, he was totally a zero all throughout his life that the holy spirit could be uh, poured out upon him flooded upon him beyond measure and he manifested the aroma the perfect glory of the father that he could say at the end of his life john 14:9 he who has seen me has seen the father he was such a faithful witness as we already saw and uh, so he by his blood that precious blood uh, it is not a uh, you know cheap uh, blood but it is a most expensive blood it is so expensive that he gave us free many a time because if something is given free in the supermarket we know that it is all should be there would be some trick they want to sell out something <laughs> but uh, it is not like that in kingdom of heaven uh, the forgiveness of sins is not that not that it is given because it uh, given free because it is cheap but it is given free because it is, it is too expensive for us to buy none of us can buy that by our merits so it is given by his grace by his mercy uh, freely to us 
and he released us from our sins by his blood and he has made us to be a kingdom uh, to be kings basilus kings we are kings we are royal priesthood kings and priests uh, you know jesus was jesus had offices of prophet king and priest and uh, we also uh, are called to be you know not everyone in the, uh, in the church but in the church there are there is prophetic minister uh, there are prophetic ministers also called as prophets of course everyone can prophesy but some are co- some are called to be apostles prophets evangelists teachers pastors or pastors or shepherd, shepherds as we read in Ephesians 4:11 so uh, you know Jesus ministry of uh, he as a king as a priest now we are king you know many a time the prosperity preachers and all i will tell us that uh to, will tell not us but no those who listen to them that oh we are king uh, we are called to be kings we are son of a king so we are to have all this luxury on this earth like that they try to deceive people but the king of kings this is himself and uh, the greatest of his apostles apostle paul and john and all they all went through all this persecution and uh, uh, you know they were you know we are not more whole hearted than any of those apostles and uh, they had a a tough time on the sir there was so much of persecution and so much of struggles of course god met all their needs but uh, you know god didn't reward them by all this material prosperity like in the old testament so all this uh, what to say gullible people who did not read the bible deserve to be deceived as zack says those who did not read the bible and meditate and hear from the lord deserve to be deceived and they are rightly deceived by this deceiving preachers who uh, sell out their prosperity gospel um and it, which is not actually gospel at all it is not a good news at all but it is uh, some you know poison from the hell that they are injecting in many people and deceiving people and so many mega churches and so many you know even recently i was hearing about some uh, you know accusation about some so called pastor in some mega church in us and all. so no wonder uh, you know uh, those are the things that they believe in and teach and Uh, those are the uh, what to say anarchy in so called churches and uh, yeah so he is the uh, he uh, he has made us to be kings and priests to his god we are kings uh, we saw that we are called to be rule of, ruling over sin and ruling over the world ruling over self or our flesh ruling over the devil and uh, uh, so you know such majestic uh, ruling we are reigning in life we saw that verse in romans 5:17 uh, even in genesis 1 we know that adam and eve when god created them god told them to rule over everything and we are called to rule over this system this is said at the end of his life just began just before he began to be he was arrested uh, you know john 18 we he was arrested in the garden of gethsemane john 17 was his high priestly prayer and the last of his words before his high priestly prayer is john 16:33 where jesus is saying in me you have peace in the world you have tribulation but we have good courage i have overcome the world you know if you see the last words of that john 16:33 is i have overcome the world what world jesus has overcome he will, he didn't overcome the roman government who was ruling over israel or anything <laughs> he was going to be crucified as a as a criminal under the roman government but what world did he overcome and uh, i have overcome the world and the same john the apostle who noted down that is explaining what the world is in first john 2:16 the world is lust of the eyes lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and pride of life and that world system that money on our pleasures and everything uh, jesus overcame and if we overcome as he overcame uh, he will grant to uh, grant to us to sit with him on his throne even today in that most holy place if we humble ourselves and overcome we can experience sitting with jesus at the right hand of jesus we can experience jesus presence with us all the time even while we are working even while we are traveling even while we are doing the chores at home even while we are you know meditating the bible <laughs> as brother lawrence a early catholic monk uh, in early centuries uh, probably in the 17th century in france uh he was a catholic monk and uh, he uh he was such a devout man that uh, you know in a s- small booklet called practice of the presence of the lord he says that i experienced the presence of the lord jesus in as much fresh and real way uh, when i was in the kitchen in the clamor of 
the vessels and when all people are demanding so many things from the kitchen as food items and all i have as much presence of the lord that time as i have when i kneel before the lord to partake of the bread and the wine from the lord's table for the blessed testimony to have that presence of the lord uh, and of course i, I think uh, the real great longing in my heart ever since the beginning of my christian life is to have that presence of the lord with me all the time and i can testify by the lord's grace that has become more and more of a reality to me uh, you know all, all, over these years especially in the last two three years you know how we can whatever we are doing you know of course there is a sense of the presence of the lord uh, not that i become perfect or anything but far from it but uh, but actually you know to sense the lord's presence all the time uh, and that is uh, how we are ruling as kings uh, we are you know if we overcome as we overcome we can be sitting with the lord on his throne not only uh, you know not only in that millennial reign and in all eternity as a bride of christ but also here on this earth we can have a life of heaven he has made us to be uh, as to be kings and priests to his god we are priests royal priesthood uh, priests offering spiritual sacrifices primary sacrifices of uh, our own bodies as the living sacrifice romans 12:1 and that uh, when we offer ourselves the living sacrifice we will have a broken and contrite spirit which are the sacrifices that god desires as we read in psalm 51 17 and we saw from hebrews 13 15 the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and sacrifice of doing good and sharing hebrews 13 15 and uh, 16 17 we saw that verses when during our hebrew bible study hebrews uh, 13 15 and 16 uh yeah doing good and sharing and all you know our out of prompting from the lord when we uh, do good and share with others and uh, not as dead works which out of our own cleverness but as what the lord prompts us to do according to his wisdom so praise to his god uh, who offers spiritual sacrifices even in first peter first peter 29 we read that uh, we are royal priesthood and uh, before that they we read there as uh, we are living stones first peter 2 uh, verse 5 uh, after uh, saying about longing for the uh, pure milk of the word of god in verse 2 then coming to him verse 4 coming to him as to a living stone this is the living stone and we are coming to him as to a living stone usually the stones on this earth doesn't have any life they are dead stones but this is the uh, stone of stumbling stone of the stumbling block uh, to jews and greek and all and this is the living stone through which the living church the living temple of god is going to be is being built as to a living stone which has been rejected by men but is choice and precious in the sight of god you also as living stones he is the living stone and we are also living stones a being built built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood holy priesthood it's a uh, not an unholy priesthood <laughs> you know many of the so called priests and clergy of this world in this religious so called christian system are unholy priesthood unfortunately but there is no special class of priesthood in the new testament at all uh, they are taking us to bc times <laughs> when they uh, claim themselves to be priests but every born again child of god is a priest whether you are a brother or a sister even the old testament the levites only the men were priests and that too with uh, they were to be born in the levite race but now it is we are priests according to the order of melchizedek which is a higher priesthood than the order of levite uh, than levitical priesthood because melchizedek uh, was given tight even by abraham the patriarch from whom levites descended we saw that in hebrews bible study so uh so we are being built together built up as a spiritual house and it's a not a earthly house it's a spiritual house for a holy priesthood a holy priesthood what a blessed adjective that is used over there to for offer spiritual sacrifices and that are, that should be acceptable to god through jesus christ only through jesus christ we can offer not on our own merit in the name of christ we pray and do everything whatever you do do it in the name of the lord jesus christ we read in colossians 3:17 uh whatever you do or speak or everything do it in the name of the lord jesus because lord not on my own merit or standing i'm doing by the blood of christ i have been cleansed and by the spirit of god in the name of christ as christ would have done lord i'm doing that as unto you 
and uh, yeah so and then it is uh, written about the choice stone verse 6 and all the stone visible as rejected verse 7 stone of stumbling and a rock of offense verse 8 and verse 9 you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people for god's own possession a peculiar people as KJV translates it uh, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So this royal priesthood, our ministry <laughs> said over there is to proclaim the excellencies of him through our life and through our words who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, suppose uh, every, everything is dark all around and we, some people are chosen to come out of the darkness into that room which is full of light. Oh, we'll be so happy. <laughs> the whole world is full of darkness and we are called to be in the light and we in the light are proclaiming to the dark world and also to people who are lesser light than us. Uh, you know, the, about the excellencies of him who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. And we were not a people. Verse 10, you once were not a people. We, we were not a people at all. We couldn't be called even a people. But now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And then I urge you as uh, aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts and all. You're a royal priesthood, so live in that dignity and calling as ambassadors of Christ's work. First Peter, Peter is telling the uh, children of God, telling us. And then uh, priest to his God and Father. So God and Father, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was reading that uh, Final Triumph book and uh, well, Zach was referring uh, John 20, 17 there. Uh, God and Father. That reminds us of Jesus uh, introducing the Father in a fresh way to us after his resurrection. Before the resurrection, he said, my Father. And sometimes he said, your Father. But after the resurrection, something happened and uh, we became younger brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a blessed privilege to be born into the family of God. You know, suppose actually we are born into some royal family, some, uh, you know, some kingly descent, uh, like the, uh, what to say, the, uh, there are in the England and all, now also there are queen and prince and all. Now. So people would be, oh, if I was born into that family and all. But, uh, you know, we are born into a greater family, the family of God himself. And uh, John 20, Jesus says to Mary Magdalene that to to the first witness of Jesus' resurrection, Mary Magdalene, a sister who had such a terrible background from whom seven demons has, had been cast out, as we read in Luke 8 2. Uh, and uh, uh, Mark 16 also, we read about Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons had been cast out. So, such a terrible past she had. And uh, she became so wholehearted for the Lord. And she was, you know, she was the. <laughs> She would have been the humblest over the lot over there that Jesus revealed himself. Jesus reveals himself to the humble. So even Peter and John didn't have that privilege, although they came close to that when they ran back to their homes. John 20, we read there. But to Mary Magdalene, who uh, who persisted, who persevered, who persevered. Now, we, today, that uh, Revelation 1 9, we read about John, <laughs> that fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance <laughs> so of course in john 20 he didn't have that much perseverance but later of course he would have repented he would have uh, they all would have felt sorry oh we should also have would have should have stayed there longer to see jesus risen uh, mary mclean had that privilege and on and so yeah so but of course we, we, we learn from our mistakes so john also <laughs> didn't condemn himself but he persevered so uh, so to uh, Mary Magdalene, Jesus is saying, "Stop clinging to me, John 20, 17. For I have not ascended, uh, I have not ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers, my brethren, my brothers and sisters, and say to them, uh, proclaim to them the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness to the marvelous light. That is what say to them, uh, verbalize to them, uh, I ascend to my Father and your Father." And my God and your God, you know, my father and your father. What a great honor. This is the second person of Trinity and he's saying, my father and your father. <laughs> You're my brothers and sisters. Go to my brothers and say, they're all my brothers and sisters in Christ. All those who want to do the will of God, these are my brothers and sisters. Jesus says in Luke 8, 21, uh, those who 
do the will of god they are my brothers and sisters not those who call themselves christians or not those who call themselves lord lord but those who do the will of god lord i want to deny my will in order to do the will of god of course we need to deny our will we need to surrender our will to the lord our self to the lord and say the lord i want to do your will and uh, then we are we are you know uh, rising up to the our calling us brothers and sisters of christ of course when we become born again itself we are brothers and sisters of christ but to be really uh, he is not ashamed to call us uh, his brothers we read in hebrews 2 so uh, if we want to do his will if we are surrendered ourselves to do his will he won't be ashamed to call us his brothers otherwise if we are ashamed to proclaim acknowledge him before others he will also be ashamed to acknowledge us uh, before the father and the angels he says in matthew 10 so uh, as i ascend to my father and your father and my god and your god so that is uh, my god and uh, you know here we read god and father uh, revelation 16 to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever glory and dominion the, uh, glory we saw that word doxa in two senses it is used as the, as when it refers to the majesty of god everything to the glory of god uh that in that sense actually i say 428 i will not share my glory with one and with another uh we cannot touch the glory of god all glory majesty belongs to god himself that is only for god but that word is also used as denoting the denoting to the character of god the divine nature the glory of christ full of grace and truth the glorious of the only begotten from the father full of grace and truth uh, we beheld this glory glorious of the only begotten from the father full of grace and truth we read that we, we read that in john 114 and that glory through the holy spirit that this is saying in john 17 22 last week also we saw i have given them the glory which you have given me and manifested to them that uh, life of the father life of heaven to them and so that glory we are called to partake of that glory to gain the glory of jesus christ we are called through the gospel second thessalonians 2:14 so here to be the glory here uh, here it is used in the sense of majesty so to be to him be all the glory and dominion dominion that word is kratos or kratas <laughs> kratas that similar expressions we see further in revelation 5:13 also if we turn to revelation chapter 5 verse 13 there the angelic beings are saying um the every created things uh, every created thing uh, which is in heaven and on earth and under the heaven i uh, in them i heard saying all all every everyone everybody is saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be the glo- be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and forever i mean and similar expression we see in many parts of the scripture glory and dominion uh, even actually jesus uh, at the end of lord's prayer matthew 6 we read that at the end of the prayer what does jesus say uh, matthew 6 verse uh 13 for yours is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and first peter if you turn to first peter 411 first peter uh, twice peter is saying like that in our lives also that should be our attitude not this i mean when all these expressions are repeated in the scriptures we think that oh it is just a kind of a usage you know when we use some expression like hello good morning uh, praise the lord you know it becomes kind of a Uh, meaningless repetition for us but word of god when it is repeated it has its own significance uh, uh first peter 411 in the ministry it is referring to the ministry in the church you know, such important words who was speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of god over oh, a great calling when we are sharing the word of god we should say as it is as utterance from god himself who was serves it is to do as one who is serving by the strength which god supplies not by our own strength but of course we use our physical strength but actually it is the might and strength of the holy spirit that uh, that we need to serve him so that if we serve through his strength and uh, as utterance we speak as utterances of god then you know all things god would be glorified not we not that oh i am such a great preacher or oh, such a bible scholar has come such a great uh, sweet singer uh, or so called worship leader has come but no man should be glorified no flesh can boast before god first corinthians 129 but 
so that in all things god would be glorified through jesus christ to whom belongs the glory and dominion all glory and dominion forever and forever amen and again in first peter 5 uh, last uh, chapter 411 we saw and 511 5 also 11 verse to him be the dominion kratos that is power and strength uh, dominion authority uh, forever and forever i mean all dominion you know we shouldn't seek to dominate over people or anything <laughs> we should be servants of people all dominion is from the is for the lord himself and uh, jude also says just before revelation is the book of jude only one chapter but he says such a uh you know he writes such a glorious expression the last verse to the only god and the god our savior through jesus christ our lord be glory and majesty and dominion and authority of oh, what an expression <laughs> all glory <laughs> all strength majesty dominion lord such a praiseworthy god you know uh, the book of revelation is full of glimpses where uh, there are excellent glimpses of heavenly praise peals of thunder and uh, such a uh, like uh, sound of many waters you know uh, there are uh, in the heaven angels are praising god and when we say we come to experience the atmosphere of heaven through the holy spirit the more we experience the presence of the presence of the lord in through the holy spirit the more heaven becomes a reality in our day to day life the more the spirit of praise would be there there is a sacrifice of praise even in the difficult times lord all glory dominion power authority lord i praise you especially uh, when when in the church when we praise together and all you know how many of us uh, say it aloud sometimes actually in the meeting also i wish if, you know during that praise time if we can unmute uh, everyone can unmute and we can together praise we, he is a god who are uh, enthroned in the praises of his people we read that in psalm 22 3 psalm 22 is a messianic psalm it says about the resurrection uh, sorry crucifixion of the lord and there in the crucifixion uh, in that psalm of crucifixion psalm 22 3 uh, we read that he is enthroned on the praises of people of course in the pentecostal charismatic charismatic circles and all actually you know we are not despising any of them but you know they just kind of overdo it in one sense when the sense actually you know Uh, without meaning it it can happen to us also you know without meaning we say so many words and uh, you know for the make of uh, for the sake of making noise they do so many things and all but we are not despising them but uh, we should learn a lesson from them uh, you know even when we say hallelujah that means hallelujah that it is a word hallelujah hallel means it's a praise word and ja is ya that is yahweh so praise to the lord hallel praise to the lord praise the lord it is hallelujah so even when we uh, use that word uh, it should mean hallelujah lord i even uh, the, every time you say the word hallelujah it should mean lord i'm praising you uh, you know hosanna it is a word for glory to the lord glory in the highest so like that and uh, you know when we praise every uh, when we when i say i praise you and exalt you when we are full of the holy spirit It is natural for us to really, you know, praise and thanks, thank God. You know, that is what we read in Ephesians 5. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 19 is the uh, only clear commandment in the word of God to be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18. Uh, and as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit, what all will happen? There we read that Ephesians 5, 18, do not get drunk with wine. <laughs> uh, uh, do not be controlled by wine. That is dissipation. but be be controlled or be filled with the holy spirit and when you are filled with the holy spirit you will be speaking to one another verse 19 ephesians 5:19 you will be speaking to one another in psalms that means actually even in your personal conversation there would be <laughs> there would be scriptures that would be coming uh, and there would be uh, some lines of the songs that would be coming uh, you know i believe you know it is an experience of all of us um, and here there would be psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody you know there is a song in our heart uh, there will be a praise of song uh, you know a song of praise and uh, even uh, yeah singing and making melody with your heart to the lord always giving thanks for all things in the name of our lord jesus christ 
uh, to God, even the Father. And we see in Matthew 26, 30, that even before going to the cross, <laughs> Matthew 26, verse 30, 3, 0, before going to the cross, Jesus is singing a hymn. And what is hymn? Anytime I thought that sing hymn means actually it's a long song is called hymn. <laughs> but actually when I saw the meaning of hymn in that uh, Webster dictionary, hymn means a song of praise and thanksgiving. Uh, in Malayalam it's called Stotram Padia Session. Uh, in English it is after singing a hymn. So that means Jesus was actually singing a song of praise to the Father and he went out to the Mount of Olives and uh, then, you know, to the Garden of Gethsemane and then being arrested and everything. So even before going to bear the cross, he's praising the Father. <laughs> so that is the spirit of praise, spirit of the sacrifice of praise, even in the midst of all difficulties and agony and or there is a spirit of praise over there. And that is to him be the glory and dominion. Coming back to uh, Revelation 1, 6, glory and dominion forever and forever. I mean, and behold, he is coming with the clouds. Uh, you know, Jesus himself says that he will come in the clouds. In Daniel 7, Daniel 7, 13 is a blessed verse <laughs> that uh, reveals to us the title of Messiah, which Jesus chose to use often. Daniel, the book of Daniel. Of course, the book of Daniel gives us much glimpses of the end times and all. Book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 13. I kept looking in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man. That son of man, that expression comes over there. Even Ezekiel uses that word, son of man. One like a son of man was coming. So the Messiah is denoted as a son of man. That title, Jesus is referring that glorious of title as an ordinary man. He referred to himself. One like a son of man was coming and he came up to the ancient of days, the father, and was uh, presented before him. So uh, there we read about the clouds of heaven. And so Jesus' second coming would be in the clouds of heaven. Even in the Mount of Transfiguration, we see about the cloud and all that cloud, that word I was seeing. Uh, Nephile is that word used over there. And, um, uh, and Nephos is a related we, uh, word, which means cloud or dense multitude. That is a word used in Hebrews 12, to cloud of witnesses and all, uh, 12, 1 rather. And uh, in uh, Jesus himself prophecies, uh, to his disciples, as well as before Caiaphas, the high priest, and all that, the Son of Man, you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. If you uh, want to turn to those, some of those verses quickly in Matthew 24, Jesus says there, Matthew 24, uh, there uh, in verse 30, uh, when disciples are asking Jesus about the signs of the end times, he says, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And similar expression, we see him telling before the high priest also, Matthew 26, uh, the long chapter, verse 64 uh, they, the high, verse 63, the high priest said to him, high priest Caiaphas, verse 57, Caiaphas, the high priest, and uh, Caiaphas is saying to him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the son of God. <laughs> Jesus said to him, you have said it yourself. Nevertheless, I tell you hereafter, you will see, verse 64, the son of man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Uh, and we uh, read similar verses in Mark's gospel, chapter 13, verse 26, and 14, verse 62, the similar verses, corollary. And Luke 21, we'll turn to that verse in Luke 21. Uh, Luke 21, 17. There we read. No, uh, sorry, Luke 21, 27, rather, not 17, uh, 27. Then you will see, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And Acts 1 9, we read that when Jesus ascended to the heaven, also <laughs> this cloud, uh, you know, a cloud uh, is taking him. Uh, there we read in Acts 1 9. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on a cloud, received him. Uh, not cloud taking him, but a cloud receiving him out of their sight. And uh, then the same that uh, Nephile, that word is used as the pillar of cloud uh, when it is used in First Corinthians 10, 1 and 2, uh, pillar of cloud that led Israel, uh, that word is used over there. 
and uh, in first Thessalonians, Paul the apostle also is saying about we being taken into the clouds. Uh, you know our <laughs> our privilege. First Thessalonians uh, chapter four. And uh, there in verse 17, uh, the elders, uh, sorry, first Thessalonians, sorry, eight, first Timothy, sorry, <laughs> first Thessalonians 4 17. Uh, then, who are, uh, then we who are alive, you know, Paul, including himself, even in the first century, he had such a hope that he would also be there alive at the second coming of Christ. What a blessed way to live. He was looking at not at his grave, but his aim was a, aim was a sky. <laughs> that means to be taken up with the Lord. Then he, we who are alive, and and we also believe, and I personally believe, you know, of course, uh, uh, you know, we are really at the end of times. Then we who are alive and remain will caught up together with him, with, together with them, that is, who are dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, what a blessed moment that would be. We will be seeing our blessed Lord face to face. Now is in a mirror we are seeing in our spirit. Lord is showing the in the mirror of the word of God uh, dimly of course progressively more clearer but of course not as clear as we see him face to face uh, so that time uh, you know to meet the Lord in the air and so we shall always be with the Lord oh what a blessed uh, comfort and that is why it says verse 18 therefore comfort one another with these words when our dear ones and all uh, die and all. we can be comforted that We'll always be together with the Lord together. And uh, uh, yeah, so in Revelation also, in multiple uh, occasions, this cloud is coming. Uh, Revelation 10, uh, I'll just quickly go through uh, that Revelation 10, 1, uh, there is a reference to the cloud. Uh, I saw another strong angel coming down out of the heaven clothed with a cloud. So, uh, and Revelation 11, 12, they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, uh, come up here. Then they went up into heaven in the cloud. And 14, 14, Revelation chapter 14, uh, 14, 15, and 16, those three verses about, uh, behold, a white cloud and sitting on the cloud was a one like a son of man. And, they, uh, and also uh, to him who sat on the cloud, he who sat on the cloud, one like a son of man, that is Jesus himself uh, sitting on a cloud, we read there in uh, Revelation 14. There is actually a judgment that is taking, that is, that is going to take place through the angels, through the sharps, with the sharp sickle and all we read in verse 17. There is Jesus sitting on a cloud, we read over there. Yeah, the, those are the references to the cloud. <laughs> so coming back to uh, Revelation 1, 7. Uh, behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. So when Jesus comes again, there is no secret coming of the Lord and there is no secret rapture of the church as many people preach. Uh, the whole church will go through tribulation and even we couldn't come to verse 9. <laughs> you know, verse 9 only we uh, titled the topic, but, uh, you know, I don't know. We don't have time to go till to verse 9, but uh, at least we'll see this. Uh, Jesus himself says about how he would come in Luke 17. Luke 21, we saw in Luke 17, Jesus himself saying there in verse 24, for just like the lightning, when it flashes out of one part of the sky, shines to the other part of the sky, so will the Son of Man be in his day. When he comes, he'll come in such a way that every eye will see him. That is what we read here also. There is no secret rapture of the church. Many time, many people have so many arguments about, uh, you know, about the pre-tribulation rapture and all. But actually, you know, <laughs> I would say that not just because Brother Zach says, but I know that yeah, I'm personally convinced from the scriptures uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, church will go through tribulation. Of course, on our own, left to our flesh, none of us like tribulation, but when we, uh, when we, without any prejudice, without any preconceived ideas, when we look to the word of God, we see that clearly. Clearly, And one of the clearest portions where we read that the church will go through the tribulation is, uh, is in 2 Thessalonians. We'll just quickly go through before we finish that, uh, finish today's portion. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 
verse 1 says about the rapture coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering together to him our gathering together to him is rapture and uh, paul is saying that uh, i request you we request you brethren with regard to the coming of our lord jesus christ second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 uh, uh, to the coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering together to him that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the lord has come so the day of the lord is synonymous there to uh, the day where jesus comes back and when we are raptured when you attend the pre tribulation people will be splitting this day of the lord and the rapture and uh, secret coming and all they will you know they take a lot of efforts to misinterpret the scriptures actually so but actually the scripture is very plain and simple even children can understand so uh, you know god has hidden these things from the wise and the intelligence and hidden reveal them turn to babes uh, so uh, so you know you should not be quickly shaken then paul says it is so crystal clear there in verse 3 let no one in any way deceive you for it will not come unless it will not come that it will not come is not there in the original greek but that unless that means unless is that word is may that means no not lest so unless or uh, kjv says except the apostasy or falling away comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction so, you know i was comparing many uh, scripts you know bible translation in the my sword bible app and all translation is crystal clear that uh, in malayalam translation but actually it is not that crystal clear unfortunately <laughs> as in many instances malayalam bible some you know in some portions it is excellent translation but some portions some ambiguity we cannot blame them you know in many uh, years ago it was translated so um, let no one uh, in any way deceive you that day it will not come it is it's a long sentence actually verse 1 2 and 3 so when you are splitting verse 3 uh, that italics in italics it will not come is added over there that means actually uh, it that day won't come unless this takes place first these two what are what are the two things that should take place before the coming of the lord jesus christ and our rapture first apostasy has to come apostasy means falling away falling away apostasy the word meaning is falling away falling away from the faith falling away from the true faith and we see that apostasy many people fall away from the true faith uh, to a false faith in the prosperity gospel in the health and wealth gospel and all so apostasy coming first and the man of lawlessness that is antichrist the antichrist is revealed the son of destruction so antichrist will be revealed uh, then only rapture will take place so antichrist when antichrist is revealed seven years reign reign would be there first three years there would be apparent political peace and the latter three and uh, the first three and a half years apparent political peace and the latter three and a half years there will be persecution against jews and poor hearted christians and uh, so this day of the lord uh, this rapture would not occur before uh, this man of lawlessness is revealed so crystal clear i don't know how scripture scripture can be more clearer than that but still people who wants to believe in a lie will choose to believe that and in even in first thessalonians 5 verse 2 Uh, many people say that oh jesus will come like a thief oh, so that means he will come secretly but actually he will like he will come like a thief for unbelievers actually that is what we read in first thessalonians 5 2 and 3 and 4 for you yourself know fully well that the day of the lord will come just like a thief in the night and verse 4 says but you brother are not in darkness that the day of a uh, day would overtake you like a thief you are to be the bride of christ and you are not uh, in the darkness god has called us to marvelous light from the darkness we saw that in first peter 2:10 and uh, so uh, we are not in darkness and uh, of course you know many people use uh, first thessalonians 5:10 uh, 5:9 to uh, you know support uh, pre tribulation rapture they you read the god has not destined us for wrath that says about the wrath of god so tribulation great tribulation is actually the wrath of the antichrist wrath of satan and the antichrist and the false prophet against the church of god that is a wrath of man wrath of man and the devil that will undergo but the wrath of god that is a judgment that will come just before jesus descends to this earth the as the last ball of anger last ball of judgment and all we read in revelation 16 and all that of course god has not destined it uh, destined us to wrath but for obtaining salvation through our lord jesus christ but many people misquote this first thessalonians 5 9 and say that church is not destined for wrath but church is not god destined for god's wrath 
it is not god's wrath that is being poured upon us of course god's wrath is being poured upon the world in darkness uh, as a judgment uh, that armageddon war and all we read in revelation but uh, man's wrath there is antichrist wrath devil's wrath and the false prophet's wrath and all are against the church and the jewish people in those uh, last three and a half years in the uh, in the uh, during that uh, period of great tribulation so that's why paul him uh, john himself says as a fellow partaker in the tribulation so here uh, you know we see in revelation 17 that every eye will see him uh, and uh, uh, even those who pierced him the even those who pierced him everyone will see him and those who pierced him are the jewish people the land of Ish, the nation of israel they are the ones who pierced jesus a uh, soldier came and pierced him in john 19 we read the you know israelites only uh, gave him over to be pierced and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him uh, all the tribes of the earth those who are earth dwellers will be mourning over him when they come oh you know we read in revelation 6 uh, you know that not revelation 615 the kings of the earth there is a prime ministers and presidents and the great men and the king rich people and the commanders and the rich and the strong and the every slave and free men hid themselves in the caves revelation 615 and among the rocks of the mountain when jesus is coming and they said to the mountains and to the rocks fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb so the wrath of the lamb there is wrath of god is upon all these people who are unbelievers but uh, you know the devil's wrath uh you know he would be having wrath against us during the great tribulation uh so uh, uh, revelation 6 17 for the great day of the, their wrath uh has come the great day of their wrath has come you know wrath where they are reaping the consequences of the wrath and uh, who is able to stand so such a terrible you know now we call jesus our bridegroom our friend and his elders were there but he is the great mighty king the king of kings and lord of lords wrath of the lamb and the great people of the world are hiding uh, in caves and uh, they are asking telling the mountains and rocks to fall on us and hide us from the presence of this wrath of the lamb you know <laughs> we cannot imagine that wrath of the lamb <laughs> lamb is a very meek creature meek animal <laughs> but a wrath of the lamb of god he is the lion of judah and the lamb of god so such a majestic god we serve even when we are going through all pressures and persecution now we are only going through some little little and by kind of small trials uh, like jeremiah 12 12 5 says if you are tired even with footmen how will you compete with horses uh, even in the land of peace if you have problems how will you uh, stand in the thicket of jordan uh, so now actually things are not that worse but uh, there will be a time when uh, you know those times um, there it would be days which uh, hasn't occurred like that you know none of us uh, by our own strength can withstand all that but uh, we can just stumble ourselves and uh, cling on to the lord the lord will strengthen us you know he will give us grace uh, to withstand any persecution uh, so we are not looking forward to the persecution but we are looking forward to uh, the blessed lord who is coming after that just like a woman in pregnancy she is not looking forward to the birth pangs but she is looking forward to the baby who is to be born so the birth pangs are there but uh, the baby is what uh, the coming of the lord is what we are looking forward to and uh, the whole uh, the, all the tribes of the earth uh, will mourn over him but we will be rejoicing we will because we will be taking taken up to the clouds uh, and we will be seeing him as a morning star to those who overcome i will give the morning star revelation 228 i will give him the morning star jesus will be a morning star jesus himself is referred to as the morning star in revelation 2216 jesus is referred to as the morning star so jesus will be a morning star to the church to the bride of christ just before sun rises the morning star would be there jesus would be the son of righteousness to the unbelievers son of righteousness as is prophesied in malachi chapter 4 he will be a son of righteousness to judge the world and heal the nations to the unbelievers but Uh, we will be seeing him just before the son of righteousness is revealed to the world we will be taken up to the clouds and we will be seeing him as the um, as a blessed bridegroom as a morning star so uh, the all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him so it is to be amen let it be so and 
the father god is saying i am the alpha and omega he is the beginning and the end who is that is present who was past and who is to come future and he is the almighty and about the world almighty and all we'll see in a little more detail god willing in the next week we'll conclude in prayer thank you loving heavenly father for this blessed time such a vast treasure is your word and thank you lord for the encouragement and the exhortation and the consolation and the correction that we receive from your word we want to humble ourselves before your word cleanse us with your blood deeper and lord cleanse us from all dead works uh through the blood of christ to serve the living god fill us, fill us afresh with the holy spirit lord help us to serve you in the power of indestructible life as priests and kings and lord we want to be your wholehearted disciples thank you jesus thank you we want to praise you all glory and dominion belongs to you you are the one who is who alone is worthy to be praised and adored we exalt your name thank you jesus thank you praise in jesus precious sweet name we pray amen